ESPN's Mike Tannenbaum dropped an insane mock draft this week, and it's time to get into it. J.J. McCarthy goes top four, but he's an Arizona Cardinal. We're going to talk about this and more coming up next. You are locked on NFL Draft, your daily podcast covering the NFL Draft. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What's up, Locked On family? Welcome back to the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast, your daily podcast covering your favorite draft prospects, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. I'm your boy, Damian Parson, always on the ones and twos. You can find and follow me on X at DP underscore NFL. I'm a national scout and a senior draft analyst. And thank you for making Locked On NFL Draft your first listen today and every day. Shout out for being our everydayers. And you know I got to kick this intro to my guy, Mr. LSU himself, Keith Sanchez. You can find and follow him on X at The Talent Code. Keep talk to him, baby. What's up, Locked On family? Let's get locked in. This is Keith Sanchez, 2019 national champ with those LSU Tigers, man. And the other side to this dynamic duo that we like to call the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast, where we bring you championship level contests around the NFL Draft 24 7 365. Want to say shout out to our everyday. Thank you for tapping in with us each and every single day. Yes, this is a mock draft show. It's not mock draft Monday, but we are going over another mock draft from ESPN's Mike Tannen Bomb. Yes, we see him on ESPN all the time. He dropped the mock draft, and J.J. McCarthy, DP, is going to the Arizona Cardinals. We have to talk about how did we get there, DP. That's a must talk. But listen, first off, hit the like button. If you haven't hit the like button already, go ahead and make sure you comment after each segment. And then if you're not subscribed to the YouTube channel with the hottest NFL draft content, make sure you subscribe to the YouTube channel. DP, before we get this thing started, and I am so ready to get this mock draft started, DP, why don't you hit them with our title sponsor? Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $200 if your bet wins. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. All right, guys, let's get into it. At pick number one, the Chicago Bears select Caleb Williams, quarterback out of USC. At pick number two, the Washington Commanders select Drake May, quarterback from North Carolina. At pick number three, the New England Patriots select Jaden Daniels, quarterback from LSU. At pick number four, the, the blockbuster of them all, the Arizona Cardinals select J.J. McCarthy, quarterback out of Michigan. At pick number five, the Los Angeles Chargers select Joe Alt, Offensive tackle from Notre Dame. At pick number six, the New York Giants select Malik Neighbors, wide receiver from LSU. At pick number seven, the Tennessee Titans select J.C. Latham, offensive tackle from Alabama. At pick number eight, the Atlanta Falcons select Dallas Turner, edge rusher from Alabama. At pick number nine, the Chicago Bears select Marvin Harrison Jr., wide receiver from Ohio State. And at pick 10, the uh, New York Giants select Olu Fashanu, offensive tackle from Penn State. And Keith, you got to go back up to the top. It's a lot that happened in this top 10 uh, that I'm going to be honest with you, Keith. I think it's a 0.0000.001% chance on the curve that any of this actually takes place in some of these spots. But number four, J.J. McCarthy. Now, when, when you say four, it, it's – been a lot of talk about the Cardinals maybe trading out of that pick. If the Minnesota Vikings offer them both first round picks, a third, they I'm talking about sending the farm, but that's not what happened here. Keith JJ McCarthy goes number four to the actual Arizona Cardinals, who quarterback is not their issue, it's the talent around said quarterback that's the problem and that needs to be elevated. But he says, let's go ahead and draft J.J. McCarthy. Let's get rid of, um, you know, Kyler Murray, who you just signed to a big contract extension. I got to look at his, his cap hit uh, and everything, Keith, in a second. But when you saw this, Keith, what's your reaction to this? Because this is insane. My, my reaction, DP, was to immediately send it to you. That was my reaction. Like, what are we doing? I, I've I, I've never even heard of this scenario popping up. But like I talked about mock drafts, right? Maybe you're mocking some of the wildest stuff because wild stuff happens in the NFL. Okay. But I will say this, DP. I don't understand the logic behind this. But be, besides the, the cap hit and wanting to restart the, the quarterback, you know, contract, which – DP, I get it, but some of the best quarterbacks in the NFL have large contracts and they've won champs Super Bowls, right? Peyton Manning wasn't 
cheap, right? Eli Manning with the Giants, he had a big contract. Um, you know, you, you think about obviously Tom Brady, and he obviously he pushed money around, moved money around, but it wasn't like, oh, let's get rid of a high level Pro Bowl caliber quarterback just to get a cheap rookie, right? Like you have to pay those guys, and it's the general manager's job that once you pay your quarterback, you still go out and find the talent and nail it in a draft, right? I think sometimes we let the general managers off the hook by saying, oh man, once he paid a quarterback, um, you know our team is going to be in trouble well the yeah, general manager's yeah. job is for the team to not to be in trouble right you 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 get a lot of the nfl year in and year out a lot to seven draft picks right go get that right and i know even in 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 college recruiting right our goal was to always hit 70 percent of our recruiting class right we want 70 percent of our recruiting class to be starters and my thing is this rounds one through four shall all be starters right and so I don't understand the logic behind that of oh, once we get a quarterback that has proven to be a pretty good NFL quarterback, now we want to get rid of him for cheaper contract because we know DP out there, there's so much worse than Kyler Murray, right? Like we have some guys starting just bad quarterbacks, some teams, right? And and so I, I'm that threw me for an entire loop, DP, because I, I just don't understand it. And the thing is, is this we were one of the first people on this podcast to talk about listen, the JJ McCarthy hype is coming, some of it's warranted. This much to where you're getting rid of proven quarterbacks already, I, I I didn't expect it this much. I thought it would be like, hey, expect this guy to go pick 12 to the Denver Broncos or something like that because there's something there. But to go top five and getting rid of guys who've already proven that they can play in the NFL, that's beyond me. No, 100%. And, and I'll say this, you know, looking at Kyler Murray's contract, if it, if it's a post June one trade, they have a ten like almost ten point seven million dollar cap hit. They saved thirty two point six mil uh, this season, right? So I, I get that there's some wiggle room from it, but again, Kyler Murray's not the problem. It's the talent on the team that's the problem. And I'd yeah, rather I rather mean, you still don't have a number one wide receiver, right? No, you still you have don't. offensive line issues. The defense still needs to be revamped. So, yeah, all, you, all you're doing is putting a 22, 23 year old kid with the same issues that Kyler Murray has and then asking him to carry it on his back. And you're hoping that it all works out instead asking of him like, to do better than Kyler Murray in this yeah, situation. Essentially, right? You're asking him to be better because if he does exactly what Kyler Murray did, then in three years, you're going to pay him the money that you're giving to Kyler Murray, right? So, correct. Which, <laughs> <laughs> which doesn't make any, it doesn't make any sense, DP. But man, just looking out the rest of this mock draft, Joe out, you know, to the Los I hate, Angeles. I hate to pick at five, Keith. I hate okay, I, I'm gonna ask you why. I love Joe out. I do. I love Joe out. But here's the problem I have: six and nine. And for me, it's like okay, I didn't. Even... I don't like the offensive line. Isn't that isn't like an Achilles heel for the Chargers, where you lost two of your better receivers. This offseason, one through releasing, the other one through a trade. And you're telling me Malik Neighbors and Marvin Harrison are staring you in the face and you go, Joe Alt? Like, that's yeah. a big, to me, that's a, that that's just a big decision where I could, in a loaded offensive tackle class, I could wait to round two and get a high-level starter in the second round where I can get a premier playmaker to go with Ju Justin Herbert in this offense. Yeah, uh, DP, I didn't even pay attention to this, that Malik Neighbors went six and then Marvin Harrison Jr. Marvin didn't go nine. till nine. That, that's interesting in itself. And I, I would have to believe if this plays out Wait, with Malik so Neighbors. Wait, so hold on, Keith. Not even cut you off. So you're telling me Caleb Williams walks into Chicago with Marvin, Keenan, and DJ with Cole Komet at tight end? Yep. <laughs> All right. That's and, and so I'm uh, just looking at it, DP, I would have to think realistically if this plays out and Marvin Harrison Jr. slides, right, because the top four quarterbacks go offensive linemen, then the first wide receiver is Malik Neighbors and not Marvin Harrison Jr. I would think one of these teams that need a top-end wide receiver would trade up. I don't see him just consistently falling down the board, right? And, and honestly, the team that I think would grab him, and, and they may, some people may say they don't need it, but – even at number eight, the Atlanta Falcons, right? Why not right. take the swing on Marvin Harrison Jr.? You have you have Kirk Cousins, Drake London, Kyle Pitts, Bijan Robinson. Now you probably have one of the best skill position groups in the entire NFL. But DP, listen, we we ripped apart and we talked about this top ten. I want to keep going, right? We're gonna go through picks eleven through twenty because I don't even think we've seen Roma Dunze pop up. So I, I don't. Oh, and all of this is live reaction because we haven't seen this mock draft. It's just a couple things I sent to you, and it was really just the first ten picks. So eleven through twenty, I have no idea what's about to happen. But coming up next, man, we're about to get through picks eleven through twenty. 
Guys, you shouldn't have to worry when it comes down to buying tickets to your next big event. But if you wait to the last minute, you will because you're trying to compete with other buyers as well as find the best deals. But let me introduce you to Game Time. Game Time is the fast and easy way to buy tickets for all your sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. Some of the benefits and other things that you will love, they have last minute tickets, flash deals, zone deals. Their tickets are easy to find and buy. And this is my favorite uh, part of using the, uh, the Game Time app. Guys, they show the views from all the seats in the venue. So before you purchase your ticket, you know what vantage point you will have. And listen, if you are in the Los Angeles, California area on Saturday, April the 6th, you can see the Cleveland Cavaliers versus the Los Angeles Lakers, LeBron James, Anthony Davis, Austin Reeves, all those guys for $112 on the Game Time app. So download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use the code Locked On for $20 off your first purchase. You know, Keith, I thought the first 10 picks uh, pissed me off, but I feel like this is going to make me even more upset. Let's get into it. Pick 11. The Arizona Cardinals traded, traded Kyler Murray for the 11th pick with the Minnesota Vikings to select, to select Quinion Mitchell, cornerback out of Toledo. At pick 12, the Denver Broncos select Bo Nix, quarterback out of Oregon. At pick 13, the Las Vegas Raiders select Talese Fuaga, offensive tackle from Oregon State. At pick 14, the New Orleans Saints select Rome Adunze, wide receiver from Washington. At pick 15, the Indianapolis Colts select Terion Arnold, cornerback out of Alabama. At pick 16, the Seattle Seahawks select Troy Faltanu, <laughs> offensive lineman from Washington. At pick 17, the Jacksonville Jaguars select Brian Thomas Jr., wide receiver from LSU. At pick 18, the Cincinnati Bengals select Amarius Mims, offensive tackle from Georgia. At pick 19, the Los Angeles Rams select Michael Penix Jr., quarterback from Washington. And at pick 20, the Pittsburgh Steelers select Adonai Mitchell, wide receiver from Texas. Keith, this is a lot to unpack, so I'm going to go right to the top. If I, First of all, and, and you know, we talked about Quinion. He, he's a, a, Q, a CB1 in our in our categories in terms of what we, when we ranked the, the guys yesterday, Keith. So I love Quinion. But if I'm Arizona and I traded down, got extra draft capital, all this stuff, and I'm at 11, now I'm sitting at 11, Keith, after taking JJ at four, right? And I'm watching Marvin Harrison Jr. fall down the board. You think I'm going to sit, pat, stand pat at 11? No, I'm trading up and I'm going to go get the guy I should have gotten at four. You know what I mean? I'm going to go up and get him if that's the case. But he didn't. It took Quinion Mitchell. This, this mock is wild, but that was a pick that immediate like just seeing that and not and realizing Mar fell like two spots in front of you and you just sat there knowing mm -hmm. that you needed a wide receiver one and said nah we're good we're gonna just put JJ out there and say hey do the best you can brother this is ridiculous this is a wild mark yeah no nah, definitely and I, I I thought about the Saints pick with Roma Dunze I, I actually don't mind that right because we know that they Even have over offensive tackle no and that's but that's what I was gonna say I, the Saints quickly have a lot of needs, right? Yeah, they, they, they have some issues. That that Ryan Ramchek news um shook that yeah. building, I'm more than sure, right? And, and that's a whole medical situation because I seen Michael Thomas commenting on it and it was like similar stuff with him and he was kind of like, hey, it ain't me, I told y'all, right? But everybody tried to make mm -hmm. it a me thing. Um, But Roma Dunje, I don't mind it because they need a number one wide receiver. I like Chris yeah. Olave, Rashid Shahid. If you haven't watched him or don't know him, he's probably one of the, the better explosive um, NFL threats, right? Like there's, there's unknown guys. He made the Pro Bowl as a, as a kick returner and punt returner, but I think he should be utilized a, a whole lot more in the offense. And then Chris Olave, they need a big body guy um, because Michael Thomas doesn't appear he's going to be back with the Saints at all. Offensive tackle, DP, obviously a, a, a need for them. Now, I'm trying to see who went behind him, right? Because I'm, I may have potentially went Kingsley Sewell Matia here because I like Kingsley a lot. And the issue is this, is that them losing Ryan Ramchek, now that puts Trevor Penning in a situation of does he play left or right, right? And then you're trying to get that figured out, which he is very raw, and hopefully he's developed over the offseason. But I think drafting Kingsley gives you the versatility. Even if you feel like he may not be the highest graded offensive tackle i think this offensive line needs guys that can play both sides because at this point mm -hmm. you're scrambling to try to put it together right unless you can take a swing on an injured david bakhtiari or something like that right and trying to fill that need and we'll see how that goes but dp i want to go to pick 19 the los angeles rams 
selecting Michael Penix Jr., right? And we keep we kept saying throughout the draft process, and we talked about senior bowl and how that was a, a a, a pivot point for us right with michael Penix, seeing him under center you know running some of that wide zone play action bootleg roll out all the sprint out all that type of stuff right and how he looked pretty good doing it dp um and i definitely appreciate that now the question is this the los angeles rams which direction are you trying to go right you just lost aaron donald now i don't think that you need to immediately um fill that need with another defensive tackle right and try to swing and hope that he's the aaron donald replacement nobody will replace aaron donald right he's one of the best if not He's top five defensive players to ever put cleats on in the NFL, right? So, and then you have what Kobe Turner that played pretty well last year, and you know you have some young guys, so you don't need to feel that. But I think you were you they made the playoffs, they they lost to the Lions, right? So my thought process is that you're you're almost right there as far as winning a Super Bowl, right? So I wouldn't want to, I mean, not winning a Super Bowl, but being NFC contenders. I would want to get a player that I feel as though can help me, right? You have a Puka, you have a Cooper Cup, right? I think Tyler Higby will be returning from injury. If you go on the defensive side of the ball, get some somebody that's going to help you and, and you know, help you kind of develop and, and move this entire thing forward. You know that Michael Penix is going to sit. And I'm all for the understanding of, hey, drafting a guy, stash him, let him learn the right way. But it's also being aware of where your team is. So I just thought that that was an interesting pick. I like the scheme fit. And I like mm -hmm. the situation for Michael Penix. I just think if I'm a Los Angeles Rams fan, I'm like, hey, we made the playoffs. How does this make us better right now? So, yeah, like I, I like I love the fit, like you said, Keith. You know, put it, it. Here's my thing: I don't mind getting a future quarterback, but I'd rather get him on day two, like third round. Like if I can get Spencer Rattler in, in the third round to sit behind Stafford oh. for another two years instead well, not of Penix at 19. Yeah, I'm not 100% sure with the draft picks, DP, but I, I would even take a um, – I, I would even take Spencer Rattler in the second round, right? And then that's what, what the, the confusion was behind the Justin Fields situation is that all of these teams that are trying to get themselves prepared to move on for their quarterback – the Steelers did it the right way, right? <laughs> they go get Russell Wilson, and, and this you could have been in the same situation and then had a Justin Fields sitting behind. So at least if you hit on him, it's like we we got that, right? And then now yeah. with your first round pick, you don't have to worry about it, and you still show your NFL fans, or your, your team fans, that hey, we're also thinking about the future with this move too. But Justin Fields is not expected to play right at this moment. Yeah, and like I said, I mean, I, I love to fit Michael Penny Jr., but 19, top 20, and he's not going to start in 2024. And Stafford just had a year where Keith, everyone thought the Rams were, man, they about to go through a rebuild. They yeah, not definitely. The worst they were supposed to be one of the worst teams in the NFL, remember? And and, and people have to talk about that because we criticized Les Snead a whole lot for his draft picks and trading the first round. Picks, guess Keith. what? DP, they got the Super Bowl, and then two years later, it was in the playoffs, right? They're supposed the to be the worst team. They're supposed <laughs> to be picking number one. So, yeah, we have to have that conversation out there in the media world about Les Snead and how he, you know, he was a horrible GM for what he did. But, DP, how do you feel about pick 20? Um, pick 20? Yeah. Well, talk about both of the wide receivers landing spots real quick. The Jacksonville Jaguars taking Brian Thomas and the Pittsburgh Steelers taking A.D. Mitchell. So, Jackson, with, with Brian Thomas Jr., I don't mind – Adding him because again, I I continue to say this, I don't think we see the full Clemson version of Trevor Lawrence until you get him a big time playmaker that has the size, speed, and athleticism that he had with Justin Ross his freshman year with T Higgins, so forth and so on, right? And Brian Thomas Jr. brings that six three six four, two hundred pounds, four three three, ran the same thing as DK Metcalf coming out a couple years ago, right? So I think he would absolutely pair well and give Trevor Lawrence that deep ball threat that he is missing. And a guy that could put that had to me, like we talked about with the receivers when we tiered them, I think it was last week. I view him as a wide receiver too, that has upside to be the one because he has the physical traits and tools to become that. Now, can he improve the route running stuff like that? That's going to be the question. Now you do have uh Christian Kirk, who's one of the better route runners in the league who can kind of help him with sinking, dropping, selling, stemming, stuff like that. I think that could be a good veteran voice for him, but I don't mind that, that fit. I love the fit. It is kind of high, but I mean, I know Brian Thomas Jr. is a lot of people's wide receiver four because he is fast and everything. And he is big. Adding that to Pittsburgh is interesting because it's not a fit I ever thought about, Keith. Like, I, I never either. thought about adding on to Pittsburgh. Uh, you know, I know they, they, you know, traded away Deontay Johnson, so that opens up a need. 
and everything. But honestly, like, could he feel Deontay Johnson's role as that kind of nuanced, savvy route runner? Yep. 100%. And even though he tested 4-3-4, he doesn't play 4-3-4. So it's like, that's a part, an element of their of this offense that needs to improve is the verticality, the vertical ball, right? The long ball, the explosive plays, where I don't know if he's going to actually bring that outside of his ability to, you know, be nuanced at the line of scrimmage, move guys, be able to stack them quickly and get vertical quickly. But in terms of just like, like instant microwavable explosiveness, I don't see that with him. You know what I mean? I've, it's not on this tape. It's just in his testing. So it's a it's a different fit. Um, but also, I mean, him and Pickens, ball skills, big bodies, catch radius for Russell Wilson, for Justin Fields, whoever's throwing the ball, you could be happy with those two as a wide receiver one, wide receiver two tandem. Yeah. I, so, no, I, I think it could be solid. The only thing is this, that the, the Pittsburgh Steelers and some of these franchises and organizations, they, they, they have line help, too, by the way. Yeah, they need O-line help. Yep. And, and some of these franchises, they, they have identities right now. Identities mm -hmm. is doing it the right way and winning. And some of them do certain things really good. The Pittsburgh Steelers do a really good job at finding wide receivers after round one, right? Especially yes. Pro Bowl, Hall of Fame, while they find them after round one. So I think they continue to run back to that well, especially in such a deep wide receiver class. I think you, you know, A.D. Mitchell, okay, cool. Get him in the first round and get Ricky Pearsall in the second, right? Um, Can, can a lad McConkey help us out a whole lot? Yes, he can, right? So I think that there's other pieces of uh, Xavier Leggett, Keon Coleman. I think they're going to look at all of those guys and be like, you know what? We can address the offensive line, and then we can go get a wide receiver in the second round and be able to round that thing out, and we feel completely comfortable because we've done it time and time again. But, DP, let's keep it going, man. What I always say, picks 21 through 32 of my favorite picks of any mock draft. We get to see those playoff teams, what they select, and then I think this is where you find the most value, right? Some of those teams, they mess up at the beginning of the draft, and you're able to recoup and, and remake up for what they messed up um, and right your wrongs through your draft process. So, picks 21 through 32 coming up next. Say goodbye to Busted Brackets because FanDuel lets you bet on every single game of the tournament, whether you're betting on a big upset or a number one seed. Guys, it's time to go dancing on America's number one sports book. Right now, new customers get $200 in bonus bets if your first $5 bet wins. I'm going to repeat that for you. Right now, new customers get $200 back in bonus bets if your first $5 dollar bet wins all right that's 200 bucks to use on point spreads money lines so much more guys you can even pick who you who you believe is gonna win it all so again 200 bucks to use on point spreads money lines and you can even pick who's gonna win it all just visit fanduel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down the nets just visit fanduel.com slash locked on and bet on college hoops until they cut down those nets y'all for making locked on nfl draft your first listen today and every day shout out for being our everydayers keith let's finish this thing strong at pick 21 the minutes the miami dolphins i'm sorry select jackson powers johnson center from oregon uh pick 22 the philadelphia eagles select brock bowers tight end from georgia at pick 23 the minnesota vikings select jerzon Johnny Jerzon Newton, interior defensive lineman, defensive tackle out of Illinois. At pick 24, the Dallas Cowboys select Byron Murphy II, defensive tackle from Texas. At pick 25, the Green Bay Packers select Tyler Guyton, offensive tackle from Oklahoma. At pick 26, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers select Cooper DeJean, cornerback out of Iowa. At pick 27, the Arizona Cardinals get their wide receiver one, Lad McConkey, wide receiver out of Georgia. At pick 28, the Buffalo Bills. Uh, add and select Xavier Worthy, wide receiver from Texas. At pick 29, the Detroit Lions select, select Leatu Latu, edge rusher from UCLA. At pick 30, the Baltimore Ravens select Jared Verse, edge rusher from Florida State. At pick 31, the San Francisco 49ers select Braden Fisk, defensive tackle from Florida State. And at pick 32, the Kansas City Chiefs select Jordan Morgan, uh, offensive tackle from Arizona. Keith, where do you want to start here? First, I want to start with right there, DP, right at the end, the, the 29 and 30, man. The, mm -hmm. So we've seen one edge rusher go in the top 10, Dallas Turner. Then the next one doesn't go 
to 29 and 30 dp we talked about this on monday's mock draft monday right that these this is something consistently that we're seeing these edge rushes are falling i think they both fall a great spots and this is what i'll talk about right capitalizing on other people's other teams mistakes lately lot to with the detroit lions matching up with aiden hutchinson yeah sign me up for that right if i'm the detroit lions right. and then the baltimore ravens getting jared reverse ladies and gentlemen this is why the baltimore ravens are always at least a playoff team is because they sit there, they stand pat, they evaluate their board, and they take best player available. Best player available in this situation is Jared Verse, in which, you know, we do the mock draft machines and they spit you the grades. They seem to always get A grade because, like an A plus grade, because they always find the best value and they find a proven football player. I just think Jared Verse, and I like him with the Baltimore Ravens, and for this reason, when I watch Jared Verse, two names that always came to mind it was Bradley Chubb. And then it was Terrell Suggs. He's yes. just one of those type of guys, those heavy handed 265, their convert speed to power, you know, just those hand combat guys that's going to bring the intensity. So I like that situation for this. So the first thing was the edge rushes for me, DP. Yeah, Terrell, <clears throat> Terrell Suggs has always been my comp for Jared Verse as well. Body type, physicality, speed to power, all of that. Keith, I, I, okay, 27. So, so you had a chance to get Marvin Harrison Jr., Malik Neighbors, Roma Dunze, and you walked out of the first round with Lad McConkey as your wide receiver one. What are we doing here? Like, what what is the what is the goal? What is the what what is the plan? I boss the plan the plan. What is the plan here? Because I am struggling with this. Because I love Lad. I don't have a first round grade on that. I don't think that is a first round wide receiver, truthfully. I yeah, think he's and a good I got I got close to there, but it was just some contested catches, like you know, playing big, like that type of situation. He, so he's I, not gonna I win many you. of those those moments, you know what I mean? Where you're hip to hip, back shoulder fades, fade ball in the in the end zone. That's not his game. He's a he's a turf separator, he's gonna separate on grass, he's gonna you know get yards after the catch opportunities, all that good stuff. But I'm not passing on a elite level playmaker for a tier two wide receiver in the in round. I'm just not doing it right. Where I where I also look at the ceiling, and you know, Miki, we had that good discussion. The ceiling ceilings are big for me, especially in round one. I want to go. I want to swing big. I want a ceiling that hey, you can we can scheme you open. You can fit into the scheme, but also what can you do? On top of that, what can how can you elevate the scheme itself? And not saying that that lad is a, a limited guy. I just don't think he's a scheme elevator where Marv is. I think Malik can be. I think Rome is. You know what I'm saying? That you see the potential of Xavier Leggett, Keon Coleman. Like I just look at guys that have more to the table, bring more to the table, and I said I want to put, I want to throw my chips into that. You know, so like you know, like I said, no disrespect to lad. I love lad, but this was just a a, a Mind-boggling draft. This is all. Let me be honest with you. I would absolutely agree with the Cardinals with a D minus. I'm trying. I don't want to go F because uh, they got guys that I like. I like JJ. I like Quinion. I like Lad. But this is absolutely a D D minus it's, for it's, me. You know what it was? They they drafted potential like I don't call them second round players, but they they overdrafted. They overdrafted yes. DP. The last thing I'm gonna wrap up with with this draft. I do like Jackson Powers Johnson to the Dolphins. Yeah, Philadelphia yeah. Eagles taking Brock Bowers. I think you add him with Jalen Hurts, with AJ scary, Brown, with Devontae right? Smith, with Saquon Barkley. That Dallas is scary. Goddard, the, the, the kind yeah, of yeah, ease, that, ease Dallas Goddard yeah. also. That is scary because we always talked about they need a wide receiver three. What if the wide receiver three was a tight end named Brock tight Bowers, named who's Brock excellent, Bowers. right? Uh, excellent run after the catch, guys. So I, I think that's a home run pick. I know we haven't given a lot of compliments out, but I'm gonna give a compliment. No, yeah, for yeah. That I, I, I love think 24 as well, Keith. The the Byron Murphy is second. To, yep. to the Dallas Cowboys. They have to get physical on that defensive line. I think you could pair him, uh, him and, and Mozzie. I think Mozzie maybe bulk back up. Get the three, 305, 310, Mozzie. You ain't got to get the 330. Just add a little bit more weight back and don't play at 285 again and, and, and get back to being a three plus 300 pounder with him and Byron Murphy on the interior at that kind of zero two eye combo. You know, I don't think you're going to have much success running on a fully fed. Mozzie Smith, uh, you know, and you know, if I'm Byron Murphy, yeah, if I'm Mozzie Smith, I'm a little bit angry, DP. You know how hard it is to lose weight, and then I didn't lost all this weight, I didn't work so hard in the NFL, committed to this situation of losing weight, and then now everybody telling me I shouldn't have lost weight. 
right? He a big boy. Mozzie probably wanted to eat, man. Mozzie wanted to enjoy himself. He was in the NFL rookie year, right? There's probably a whole lot of steak dinners he had to pass up on in order to get the 285. Salads, man. man. He, was on, he was on that salad diet, yeah, brother. Yeah, and, and I know that was tough for him. I know that Dallas has a lot of good restaurants out there, too. But DP, that wraps up another episode of the Locked On NFL Draft Podcast. Yes, we told you this show was going to be action-packed. I told you at the top of the show, telling you, telling you at the bottom of the show, man, make sure you like Make sure you have commented, and if you're not subscribed to the YouTube channel, go ahead and subscribe to the YouTube channel for the best NFL draft content there is out there. I am Keith Sanchez. You can find me on X at The Talent Code. That right there, that's my co-host, my guy on the ones and twos, man, Mr. Damian Parson, and you can find him on X at DP underscore NFL. And like we always like to say, man, y'all come talk to us because we like to talk back. Go subscribe and follow for free on YouTube. Wherever you listen to podcasts, you get the latest episode as soon as it is available. Thank you for making Locked On NFL Draft your first listen today and every day. Shout out for being our everydayers. And guys, on tomorrow's show, we hopefully will be able to hear back from Mr. Sanchez because he's going to be at LSU's Pro Day. Back so home. Hear about Jaden, Malik Neighbors, Brian Thomas Jr., Makai, Witt, all those guys that's going to be there. So we hope to hear back from Mr. Sanchez himself to get the recap from the LSU Pro Day. So, Listen, come and join the conversation again tomorrow on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day.